Hi guys, Korean Movie Recapped here. Warning, spoilers ahead. Today, I'm going to recap a Korean action crime movie released in 2006, called, A Dirty Carnival. A mid-tier gangster working for a local Seoul Mafia organization is torn between his criminal life and devotion for his loved one. His complicated situation forces him to go all in to climb the rank ladder. But behind his instant success, a hidden consequence awaits at the end. Will he regret his decision? Let's find out together. Byung-do is a mid-rank gangster working for a local mafia organization. He has several subordinates under him, with Jong-soo as his trusty right-hand man. Time is tough, as they have financial difficulty after lousy business luck. They even struggle to fulfill their daily necessities, but their brotherhood bond keeps them together through difficult times. After successfully collecting debt from his client, Byung-do goes to his direct superior Shang Chul to submit the money. His boss gives him a tiny share of the money for him and his subordinate. Byung-do begs him to share a little more as his men struggle to survive. Furthermore, he needs money for his own family, who will be evicted soon from their home. But his boss becomes angry. It seems like he doesn't take care of his guys and keeps the income of the money collections for himself. Later, Byung-do meets with the organization leader, President Huang. He praises him for his performance on the recent job. He then invites him to drink with him. President Huang is different from Shang Chul. He seems to be more caring for his subordinate. He even tells Shang Chul to let Byung-do manage a new gambling game room they are about to open after knowing Byung-do and his men are struggling. When they are enjoying their time, President Huang gets a call from a public prosecutor who has been bothersome to him for a while. President Huang asks Shang Chul to eliminate him. But Shang Chul doesn't dare to play fire with a public prosecutor, so he politely declines. At that time, Byung Du still doesn't dare to cross his direct superior, so he stays silent. On the next day, they celebrate the opening of the new gambling game room. Byung Du and Jong Su are slightly relieved as they now have a little extra income to support them. Suddenly, Byung Du's best friend from elementary school, Min Ho, shows up. They go to a nearby cafe to catch up with each other. Min Ho is a movie director, and his current project is a gangster film. To improve the film's authenticity, he interviews Byung Du, who he sees as a real gangster. But suddenly, Byung Du gets a call. A rival gang is attacking his new gambling game room. He rushes back, but it's already too late. They had already destroyed the place and retreated. Shang Chul decides to declare war and tells Byung Du to gather forces. Byung Du got ambushed by the rival gang on the way to the meeting point. They are outnumbered, but Byung Du and Jong So fight side by side and fight back. Shang Chul and the reinforcement come late but manage to control the situation. Amidst the chaos, Shang Chul accidentally stabbed one of the enemies. Beating up each other is one thing, but killing is a whole not her level. They can get into trouble with the police for it. President Huang assesses the situation with Shang Chul and Byung Du. Shang Chul decides to pay some compensation to the rival gang, and Young Pil, his subordinate with the same rank as Byung Du, will go to jail on his behalf. He also decides to let Young Pil's men run the gambling game room as a reward for covering his ass. It makes Byung Du disappointed as he loses the source of income he needed so badly. Byung Du begs him to reconsider, but Shang Chul lets him down once again. Byung Du drives President Huang home after he finishes his meeting with Prosecutor Park, the one who has bothered him for some time. He talks about his problem with Byung Du and shares his wisdom with him, making them a little bit closer. On the way back, Byung Du realizes it can't go on like this, as he does carry responsibility for his boys and his family. He needs a way to boost his career, so he goes back to President Huang's house and takes the job to eliminate the prosecutor. He then discusses it with his most trusted man, Jong Su. Although it is risky, Jong Su trusts Byung Du's decision and follows his plan. On the next day, Min Ho takes Byung Du to the elementary school reunion. He plans to reunite Byung Du with his school era love interest, Hyun Ju. Byung Du finds that he still has an interest in her and attempts to rekindle their relationship. But as they enjoy their time together, Jong Su calls him. He has gathered enough information and is ready to execute their plan. So they start following the prosecutor and wait for the right moment. Although it's their first hit job, they perform the plan flawlessly. After he eliminates the prosecutor, Byung Du receives the money he was hoping for in addition to President Wang's respect and a spot at his side. They swear never to speak of it to anyone so they, and the organization, will not be implicated. 
Shang Chul becomes aware of the murder and feels threatened by Byung Du's subversion of his authority and lack of consideration for the organization. So he summons him to vaguely ask him about the matter. But as he promised to President Wang, he pretends not to know about the incident. So Shang Chul plans to set up a hit to take him out. But Byung Du is brighter than he thinks. Back at his base, Byung Du is having a feast and party with his men. Money is no longer a problem, but another greater problem has arrived. Byung Du knows Shang Chul might go after him now. So they decide to strike first. Meanwhile, as they prepare their plan, Byung Du helps Mean Hu gather material for his movie. He welcomes them to his base to talk with his subordinate to understand more about the gangster's life. Byung Du also tries to start to approach Hyun Ju at the bookstore where she works. It is now the wedding day of Shang Chul's sister. Byung Du and his men are planning to execute their plan there. They act normal and wait for the right moment. First, his men kidnap and take down Young Pil. Now that his trusty man is not there to protect him, Byung Du follows Shang Chul to the toilet and eliminates him while he is alone. He stabs him multiple times as he gazes into his eye. He will soon regret looking at his eyes, as it leaves him with heavy emotional baggage. After that, his life is better than ever. He climbs through rank and gets enough money to move out from his old house. Now that he is not a low-ranked gangster anymore, he has more confidence and tries to approach Yeon Ju once again. They enjoy talking together as Yeon Ju's manager scolds her and tells her to continue to work. He then takes her on a dinner date after work hours. As he climbs to rank, Byung Du now has been trusted with the real estate business of the organization and works in a fancy office. Mean Hu congratulates him as they talk more about his upcoming movie. President Wang has a request for him. His daughter wants to be an actress, so President Wang wants her to be cast for the film. Mean Ho gladly accepts the request. On the next day, Byung Du bought shoes for Hyun Ju. When he is about to give it to her, he sees her arguing with her manager. It turns out they had a relationship in the past. The manager became jealous when he saw her with Byung Du earlier. So he tries to force her back to him. Seeing that, Byung Du tries to help her out of the situation. But the manager keeps insisting. It makes his gangster soul snap and beat the shit out of him. Although Byung Du is practically defending her, his gangster tendencies frighten Hyun Ju. She doesn't want to see him anymore. It really breaks his heart as he realizes not everyone can accept his way of life. He drinks like a fish to forget it all and calls Mean Ho for help. At the lowest point of his heart, he ends up revealing to Mean Ho his deepest darkest secrets, including the hits on both Attorney Park and his former boss, hoping it will somehow relieve his burden. Life goes on, and now President Wang assigns him to an important job. If Byung Du can help him force some landlords to sell their land so they can use it to build a grand apartment, President Wang will give him a share of the grand plan profit, worth hundreds of billions won. He will finally start making some serious cash after all those sacrifices. So he and his men start harassing all those landlords. Meanwhile, Byung Du brings Mean Ho to meet President Huang. They enjoy their time talking about the upcoming movie where President Huang's daughter will play as he promised. Byung Du still doesn't want to give up Hyun Ju, so he goes to her workplace. But it seems she has skipped work for some days now. He goes to her place and finds her lying weak in her room. Byung Du immediately brings her to a hospital and takes care of her on the following days. Another rival gang found out about their plan and bought some of the lands before them. Byung Du tries to handle them, but he gets kidnapped instead. Fortunately, he manages to fight back and track down the rest of them. With that, he successfully presents all of the landlord's approval to President Huang. Feeling great, he goes to the movie set to check how his friend's film is doing. He shows the actors how to fight like a real gangster and makes Mean Ho promise to make the film with the true gangster spirit. At night, he tries his luck again and brings a bouquet for Hyun Ju. She starts to see that despite being a gangster, Byung Du still has a good side left. They go on a fancy date and enjoy their time. When Byung Du takes her home, he can't resist kissing her passionately. The only barrier between their relationship is Byung Du's wild lifestyle. But he promises her he will leave them all just to be with her. But can he truly escape his gangster life? Mean Ho's movie has been released. At the premiere, President Wang congratulates and thanks him for casting his daughter. Meanwhile, Byung Du is having dinner with his family and Hyun Ju. After seeing the movie's premiere, President Wang calls him and tells him to see the movie immediately. Something seems wrong. 
Soon Byungdu discovers the film reenacts many of the events from Byungdu's past, including the hit on Attorney Park. Min Ho uses what Byungdu told him secretly. He immediately confronts Min Ho about it. The film doesn't explicitly show their identity, but it proves Min Ho can't be trusted. He warns him of the consequences if he leaks out any more information. Jong Su suggests eliminating Min Ho, since the risk is too high. But it makes him angry, and he chooses to spare Min Ho's life. Against Byung Du's order, Jong Su kidnaps Min Ho. But not to kill him, they just play with him to warn him. Byung Du reports to President Huang everything is under control, as he never mentions any name to Min Ho in his story anyway. So they proceed to celebrate the success of the Grand Apartment Plan. But unknown to them, what Jong Su has done has awoken something deep inside Min Ho. On the next day, Byung Du meets Hyun Ju to give her a special gift. Suddenly, a police force came to arrest him. He barely manages to escape, leaving Hyun Ju in confusion. At that moment, he knows his best friend has sold him out to the police. He stays low, meets President Huang at night, and promises to set things right by eliminating Min Ho then leaving the country. But it won't be an easy task. Min Ho's movie was a hit, and he has become a big figure now. Byung Du then meets his trusty man, Jung Su. He regrets not hearing his suggestion. But, it is what it is. Jong Su is willing to help him clean up the situation, no matter what. As second in command, Byung Du leaves his men to him after he is gone. Byung Du starts to move to assassinate Min Ho at a party. Min Ho manages to escape, but Byung Du's man captures him outside of the building. Byung Du then goes to where his subordinate is supposed to take Min Ho. But upon arrival, an unknown group appears and attacks him. Despite being heavily outnumbered, he fights back and stumbles away from the attackers but is heavily wounded. He is glad when his subordinate arrives at the scene. But out of nowhere, his subordinate stabs him. They betray and kill him, which appears to be led by his own most trusted right hand, Jong Su. The movie ends with President Wang and Min Ho discussing future movie ideas. But he vaguely warns him a fiction should remain a fiction. Jong Su joins the meeting, taking Byung Du's position at President Wang's side. The underworld is a world without trust and mercy. Once you set your foot there, nothing can set you free. What do you think Byung Du should have done to avoid his grim gate? Let us know what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you for watching, and as always, see you next time.